a couple of weeks ago when Andrew Schultz was on, he mentioned a couple of things that didn't bother me. They just really made me want to think and talk to you guys about it because it's real fucking important that you get what the basis of all this that we're doing here is, you know, whether it's podcasting, whether it's stand-up comedy, whether you're Jenica Jones and you're drawing pictures, whether you're fucking, uh, you know, Bob Lingus and, and you work in an office, you know, we each have different things and we ended up and we chose our lives and, and here we are. But the weirdest thing that, like, if I could go back in time, there's one thing I'd do. I'd beat the fuck out of my guidance counselor. Remember your guidance counselor? <laughs> he gave you all the wrong information there was. I don't even know why they pay those motherfuckers. If there's still guidance counseling schools, you got to be, like, certified by me. Like, you, you, you can't go telling people bad information. And the information he instilled in me, which is very easy to get sucked in by, is money. Anytime... You would choose a career when you were young. People would say, well, it doesn't make any money. You're not, what are you going to do? You're going to be a cop at 35000 a year and get shot up by people and pay that for lunch? You know, we, we're such a society that's money-driven. When we're 16 to the age of 18, we can't wait to have fucking $3 so we could be that person with the yacht and the girls and the fucking bar and the fucking people hanging around you and the cars and the limos that's what you really think that's your basic belief like i can't wait my life will be so much simpler when i get to that point we always think of that point but we never think about how we're going to get there especially from the ages of like 18 to 26 you think you're just going to bump into it on the street like it's just gonna somebody's gonna see you we all have different fantasies you know like for me, it was like uh, starting like a drug network and making six million every six weeks. Like I couldn't even fucking control myself. How can you make six million fucking dollars? I couldn't even do little things. How can you make six million fucking dollars? You know. But I still remember being twenty uh, four years old, and one day I saw a picture of a Ferrosa test. What is it? Ferrari. Ferrari Testarossa, whatever the fuck those cars are. And I remember hanging, hanging on my wall, and I had I lived with uh, a girl and th three other guys at the time, two other guys. It was a four. It was four of us. And one of the guys came in my room. We we're talking about something. And he saw the picture on my wall. And he goes, "Is that your favorite car?" And I told him, "No." I gave him some bullshit spiel. You know, when you're 27, 23, whatever the fuck I was, I gave him some bullshit spiel. Oh, that was going to be my fucking car. In three years, you know, and I remember him looking at me like, and like he was like maybe two years older than me, but he was going, he had gotten his college degree. He was a very smart white guy, very open. You know, he drank, he smoked dope, but he was in a pinch in his life. Like I was watching, here I was with no college education, making decent money at the time, working in a car dealership. And here he was, like, you know, he had this tremendous fucking degree, but he couldn't get a job. He was he would be up early in the morning, and he was trying to, I'll never forget this, it's, it's really weird. He was trying to, he would go to a thing called Toastmasters. Yeah, they still have it. So he would wake up, like, at 7 in the morning and go to Toastmasters to overcome his fear of speaking in public. And I remember that I'd be getting up and I'd be eating breakfast and he'd just be getting back from the fucking meeting. And he, I'd ask him, where the hell have you been? And he was like, I was at Toastmasters. And I go, what's Toastmasters? And he goes, it's like a group of men or women or whatever the fuck to get together and we talk. And, and I go, so you go to a place to practice public speaking? I didn't know that people had fear of public speaking or whatever the fuck it was. I was used to public speaking every fucking day of my life at the at the deli or at the bar or on the corner or on the basketball court. At one point of the day, you know, where I was from, you had to fucking take control and talk some shit. If not, they th they think you're fucking retarded. So I didn't understand. Yeah, you had to say something, my neighbor. If not, they thought you were fucking retarded. Like, you're a fucking retard. You don't say nothing. So 
you had a, you know, to me, when he said Toastmasters, I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Now, let me go down. I'll straighten those motherfuckers right oh, out. I'll give them there. a speech of a lifetime. And comedy was not even on my fucking radar then. But here I went from being this fucking pathetic loser to just being a regular loser. <laughs> and I'm selling cars and I'm snorting coke and I'm, I had a semi-regular life at the time. But I really wasn't going anywhere. And I kept thinking, yeah, if I do this and if I do that. Because I wasn't like, I was just like you guys. The work that was going to be involved to put in to become a millionaire or a multimillionaire, whatever the fuck I was thinking I was going to be, one of those guys with a yacht, the work was just too much. Like, I, if they thought I was going to do, if, if I really thought I was going to do it by working, like, that wasn't going to happen. Like, I was making anywhere from seven to ten grand a month selling cars. In 87, that was a lot of money. money. That's a lot of fucking money. And I remember that I I used to be furious about the taxes. Oh, yeah, that's a big killer. I was furious (laughs) about the taxes. And and that was a job where they gave you a lot of cash, bonuses. And that makes it worse. When somebody gives you cash, like eight, nine hundred dollars a month in cash and bonuses, oh. I would fucking cry like a motherfucker. Kicks you into a new tax bracket. You make less money. Yes. So so I did not understand the whole thing of money. But like I'm telling you guys, I was very confused thinking that. I was just going to bump into it. And a lot of us do. We think, well, we're going to bump into it. And then our lives are going to be fucking so completely different. I can't tell you how many times I was laying brick. I can't tell you how many times I was waiting for a fucking bus or waiting for a subway in New York City going to a fucking bartending job to make twelve fifty an hour plus tips. I can't tell you how many fucking times I was like, you know, carrying fucking four by twelve. This is the dog. Remember four by eight ply, uh, sheetrock? I remember years ago when I had to carry four by twelve sheetrock up four flights of stairs in fucking Hoboken, New Jersey, when they were redoing Hoboken in the early 80s. Like, I did it all. <clears throat> but what always made me think that this was coming to an end was that I was going to become rich. And then everything was going to fucking be hunky-dory. Like, I thought that when you saw somebody that had money, right away it associated fucking this big uh, this big bulge of happiness like in my mind if I had money I wouldn't do blow anymore I would be out of every night I could eat out every day how I wanted to live my life I didn't have no idea I had no balance no nothing I got locked up when I got locked up it gave me a chance to clean up from the coke and I saw people that didn't have money behind bars trying to act like they had money. And that's when it finally started hitting me. Like that money fucks with people. Like I never knew until the age of when it was too late, 25. 